I can never deserve But you give it anyway You took all of the things of my past And you turned it into praise The things I should have done And the things I should have said They're playing on a repeat Inside of my head They try to hold me back But you give it us a break Victory Kids, let me tell you, I am thankful for these directions. Trying to put this together without them, whew, it would have been a mess. Anyway, it's so good to see you. Have you ever tried to do something without any directions? Or maybe you were trying to build something and you had to ask your grown-ups for help? Directions are a guide, and our grown-ups help provide us with a plan for how to move forward when we get stuck on something. We need that. You know who is the best at helping us? Let's watch these videos and then we can see what the Bible says about it. Hey Victory Kids, Pastor Sarah here and it's time to go over our memory verse. This month, our verse is found in the book of Psalms, chapter 98, verse four, and it says this, shout joyfully to the Lord, sing for joy and sing praises. Now, I want you to watch carefully as I teach you the motions. They go like this, shout joyfully, take your hands and put them around your mouth. To the Lord, point up, we're talking about God. Sing for joy, put your hands on your heart, and sing praises, lift your hands up in the air. Psalm 98, four. Open your hands just like you're opening up a Bible. Pretty easy, right? Now this time, I want you to join in and do it with me. Are you ready? Yeah. 
Shout joyfully to the Lord. Sing for joy and sing praises. Psalms 98, 4. Come on, guys. You ready? Let's go. Alaba al Señor con alegría. Canta por gozo. Canta alabanzas. Salmos 98, 4. Bye! Yeah. bye. God's story, Noah. So part of God's story is about Noah, and it begins like this. First, let's start at the beginning. God created the world to be the most perfect home, with mountains as playgrounds and oceans as swimming pools. Then God made people to be like Him and to live in it. And He wanted us to play with animals and explore jungles and be close to Him forever. It was perfect. But instead, people ran away from God. They hurt each other. They ruined the perfect home God had built for them. The Bible says this made God really, really sad. So sad, in fact, that God decided to wash away all the evil and meanness and cruelty in the world by sending a huge flood to destroy everything, to get rid of all the wrong things and the people who kept doing them. But there was one guy who followed God. That's right, Noah. God had a special rescue planned for Noah. He told Noah to build a big boat called an ark to stay in during the flood. It had to be big enough for Noah's wife and kids and at least two of every kind of animal on earth. So, pretty big. And Noah had to build it in the middle of dry land, which means his neighbors probably thought he was crazy, or at least a little weird. Kids, sometimes following God looks a little weird. We're okay with that. Anyway, looking weird didn't stop Noah. He knew he needed to be rescued. So he finished the ark and waited for God to bring the animals. And God brought them all right. Just imagine what those neighbors thought when they saw an entire zoo strolling through their yards. When Noah's family and all the animals were inside, God shut the door. Then, the Bible says God opened the bottom of the ocean and the windows of the sky. We don't know what that means exactly, but we do know it was tons of water. It rained like this for 40 days and 40 nights. And the rain wasn't the worst of it. Once the water stopped, it didn't go away. Noah and his family sat cooped up, floating in the ark for over a year, just waiting. And waiting and waiting. Did we mention they waited? Well, when the tops of the mountains finally started to show, Noah sent out a dove to see if there was dry land. There wasn't. A week later, he sent the dove again. The water was going down. A week later, Noah sent out the dove one last time. It didn't come back, which meant it had found a home. Noah and his family could leave the ark. The very first thing Noah did was build an altar to worship God and thank him for his rescue. And God made a covenant with Noah which is like a very special promise. God promised never to destroy the earth with a flood, even though he knew humans would keep right on doing wrong things that made him sad. God put a rainbow in the sky to remind Noah that he would definitely keep this promise. And just like God rescued Noah, he would one day send his own perfect son, Jesus, to earth. Jesus would take the punishment of all people. Then God could be close to everyone who wants to follow him. And that's the story of Noah. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God made a perfect home. People ruined it. God was sad. He planned a flood and a rescue. Noah built an ark. Animals came. It rained. Noah waited. Dry land appeared. Noah worshiped God. God made a promise. God sent Jesus to rescue us. And that's a part of God's story. Like we saw in the story about Noah, God provided Noah with directions so that he can be safe. God gave him a plan. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans to prosper you and not to harm you. They are plans to give you a hope and a future. Doesn't that sound amazing? God has a plan for us and there are good plans. No matter what we're going through, 
He is always there to provide for us and to help us. Following God and the directions He gives us is always the best thing for us. This week, let's shout out our praises to God because He takes care of us. Let's say this together. Repeat after me. God, I praise you because you take care of me. Thanks for watching and hanging out with me. See you next week.